Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my mid-year flip through of my digital book journal. This is something that a few people have asked me for, so I thought I would share and upload it, and the easiest way for me to do it is do a recording through StreamYard, because then I get to share my digital journal with you on the screen, and it means it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. Full confession, I recorded this video but forgot to hit record, so I have already done this once through and I may now forget things on the second go, but we're going to just try again anyway. I am nothing if not persistent with this. Most of you will know that I have a digital book journal I have for the last two and a half years, and at the end of the year I have them actually professionally printed and keep them as a physical journal and a record of my reading. And I really enjoy doing that and I have budgeted for it and things like that because it is not a cheap way to do it because I'm printing only a one-off book. So, you know, you don't, you don't get really any discounts and this tends to be quite a long book because it's a year-long reading record. But this year I have tried a few things such as making the book covers smaller and including more on each, each page just to reduce that a little bit. But We'll see what happens at the end of the year. I mean, I'm, this is just something that I enjoy having as a, as a record. Also, every month or every other, other month, you might join in with Heather Bree and Robin and I as we do our journaling lives. This is typically what I'm working on. I also record when I do bulk edits on the journal and just upload them for members. They're not really talky videos like this. They just tend to be um, with music and a bit of an overview of what I'm doing. But I also do share the creation of my monthly spreads with everyone as part of my monthly reset videos. So you do get to see some of this, but this is a flip through of what it looks like currently at the 1st of July. So this is my journal. I absolutely love it. I create most of my templates in PowerPoint and export them as PDFs and then just upload them to GoodNotes. And then I have a whole stack of GoodNotes stickers and clip art and things like that that I've purchased through Etsy and then anything else tends to come from Canva and I just export them as images with transparent backgrounds and use them to create layers. This is the front cover. The very first page is my reading stats, which as you can tell, I was a little bit overly ambitious in thinking I was going to, you know, keep track of things like phys physical or digital books or audio books. Really, I should have just kept it at books and pages read, <laughs> but that's okay. That's where we are. Not every page and not everything that you create has to be useful to you. My favorite page at the moment is this reading tracker, which is the first time I've tried to do a reading tracker like this, where I track how many pages I read every day. I have a little key here. I'm simply using the highlighter tool in GoodNotes and just coloring in the square that corresponds with each month and each day. And I love how pretty and colorful it looks. I am nothing if not someone who appreciates a good aesthetic. And this just brings me a lot of joy. And it's a good reminder to even to read a couple of pages every day. Then we have my anticipated releases layout. This is for the first six months of the year. I don't use this as much as I probably should and in fact I need to update it but it is what it is and I should definitely go in and put in my anticipated releases for the second half of the year because I clearly have not done that. Then we come to my physical TBR spreads. These were the books that I had on my TBR trolley which is just over here next to me. These are all the books that were on there at the start of the year and then I used these little clip art images to mark whether I've read them. So the little clip art images tend to correspond with the months of the year and the layouts that I have in the journal. And anything that has been crossed out is either a DNF, a unhaul, or in the case of the Star Wars books, I've simply taken them off my cart and put them on my Star Wars shelf because I'm not in the mood to read them at the moment. My Star Wars books I tend to go in cycles with, so it felt a bit silly just to keep them on the cart and take up space when I could just put them on my shelf and I know which ones I have and haven't read yet. So I have a couple of pages of my physical TBR and then I have the physical TBR books that I picked up at Rare and I thought to be honest this is the one I'm more interested in tracking because I want to make sure that I'm reading through all of these books that I pre-ordered and again you can see I'm marking them with different clip art images when I have read them. So that's the second page of the Rare book haul and the third page. And I am trying to read through those by having, you know, a dedicated prompt in my monthly reset videos where I choose an author and try and read as many of the books that I purchased from that author in that month. You know, just a bit of incentive. This is my did not finish on my DNF page. So if you've watched my DNF video, you will have seen that I've talked about these 14 books. And there is one extra one that I read since I filmed that video that I did not finish. And then we move into my monthly spreads. 
And the way that these are set up, it's the same layout every month. There is a cover page, usually with a quote. I really love the colors on this page. This one makes me so happy. And then there is a spread that includes my video covers for the month. So these are all my novelty corner videos from January. And then these ones are all of my kids channel, my little bookish teacher videos. I like having a record of the content that I've created, and this is an easy way to do that. And then we get into my book layouts, which change depending on the month and depending on the book and what's going on on the page. But I typically include a book cover and a quote, except for one month, which I will highlight where I just included first lines in books, just out of interest. If I do have an audiobook, I try and grab the audiobook cover just so I remember that that was an audiobook, not a ebook or a physical book. You know, if it's a reread, if it's something that's got a really big quote, I'll change up the layout so that, you know, it has enough space. And then typically my kids' books, I don't always include quotes. It depends how I'm feeling and what the layouts are like for each month. I might just group them together. I definitely don't do it for picture books. Sometimes I do include quotes for my not my kids' novels, but it just depends, like I said, how I'm feeling and what's going on on each layout. I really loved February's layout. I love the gnome, but I also love the Valentine's theme and the Alexis Hall quote. I decided to go with a blackout theme, so black backgrounds for February, and I am really happy with that choice. I think it turned out pretty cool. I'm interested to see what it looks like when it's printed. Actually, no, that's a lie. I have done that before. I've done it in an October layout. It does look really good. So some picture books. And like a lot of these little background details, I tend to find those on Canva and just export them as transparent images so that I can use them to create different effects. So here is March. Again, the different covers for my... YouTube videos. If I do reread something, I include it again and I include a new quote so that I have, you know, different favorite lines. And depending on how much space is left over from my adult reads, I might include the kids' books on the same spread or I might create a completely different one. It just depends. I don't want to waste pages in this journal. I did include a separate layout for the Trans Rights Readathon. I thought that was important. And then we move into April, where I clearly forgot to put down the author of this quote, but that's okay. I will find it at some point. It will probably be from the previous month. So again, my content layout, then all of my books. What I would like to go back in, I started marking review copies and then forgot to continue with it. And I would also like to mark buddy reads in here, but you'll see at the end, there's also other spaces where I can mark buddy reads. Some of that stuff I don't mind doing until later, but yeah, <laughs> just working out what works for me at the current moment in time. Because this was April, I also included my rare photos. So you've got photos with Amy Aislin, Evie Mitchell, Sally Thorne, Nada Malone, Amy Andrews, I think Nalini Singh is in there. And then the view from my hotel, all the books that I brought back from Rare and all of the swag. And then we hit May, which I love the colours for this. It's like one of my autumn layouts and I am very happy with it. So here are all my cover pages. And then this was the first month where I started making the cover pages a little bit smaller, just because it minimises the number of pages that I need for books. Though I have to say I really like the header and the footer this page it was just a autumn leaf photo from canva that i just cropped and it makes me really happy i love the colors of it here are the kids books most of these are shortlisted books from the children's book council awards for 2023 and then we come to june which is my pride month layout and i also love this so i've talked about it before i typically try and have a color theme for each month just to differentiate between my videos and i don't know how effective this one was and in fact, I've got to change my A to Z romance books because it's not, it didn't happen in June. But I tried to use a gradient for the East flag. And look, I don't know how successful it was, but it made me happy. The kids' books channels, I just tend to pick a bright color. I, I'm not worried about recording monthly things there. I think it just needs to be bright and fun. And these were my June reads.
my kids' books. These kids' books were, most of them were rereads for various recommendation videos, but I thought it would be really important to include them because I was rereading them for content. And then this is my July monthly setup. I haven't chosen a quote yet to go in here. I need to find one. But I love the wintry theme of this because it is finally starting to feel like winter here in Melbourne. So we have my content covers. I do need to move the books I've DNF'd over a little bit because I need to put in a recent reads video in between. But those are the two videos that I've already edited and uploaded or scheduled. This will be the layout for the books, just really simple. And then we come into sort of my extra stuff, which may or may not be included in the final printed book, but they tend to be things that I might keep track of. So I was attempting to do reading challenges like read what you own, but clearly I forgot to fill in the rest of the uh, information. This was my TBR for the draft, which was our Ted Lasso vlog collaboration. That was a whole lot of fun. One of my challenges at the start of the year was to read all of the bad guys books, which I did. So I did have a page for this, but this one I may not keep because I do have them all on another page or I might swap this page out with the content that was earlier in the journal. But until I decide what I want to do, it just stays here. I was tracking my buddy reads with Brie, but again, I'm clearly very bad at remembering to update this. And then these were, these were supposed to be other buddy reads, like when I read Icebreaker with Izzy. I was keeping track of my Christmas books because I was, well, I usually do a Christmas in July video as well as I read Christmas books in December. I probably need to update this. I know I have a few more Christmas books. One thing I like to do, which people noticed in my previous flip through of a printed version of one of my journals, is I like to keep track of memes and things on Instagram or just fun images or quotes. And so when I find them, I screenshot them and, you know, eventually I get around to updating them and adding them to my good notes. I also like collecting character art that I find online. So this is some Alexis Hall, Nalini Singh, and these are the character artwork for the Innkeeper Chronicles. I have the black and white ones in my books, but I do like the coloured images as well. So I haven't decided if I'm going to keep those in for the end of the year or not, but I have just added them in so that if I figure out how I want to lay it out, I can do that at some point. And then the rest of these are just extra templates that I've made that I don't typically use, but I've kept them in here in case I decide that I want to for whatever reason. So this is my little books read bookshelf and also my book review template. So that is everything that is in my digital book journal. It's my mid year flip through. Uh, I'm really proud of it. I'm happy with how it's turning out. It's something that I don't necessarily update every day, but I come back to a couple of times a month and I really enjoy sharing it with people. So I hope that you enjoyed seeing how it's coming along. If you have any questions about it, feel free to let me know. If you have a digital book journal or a book journal in general, I'd love to know about it. If you upload videos for it, let me know because I will go and follow you. But yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's turning out. So I hope that you enjoyed seeing it and that you are staying safe and healthy wherever you are in the world. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.